Hey, John here. Let's start with the Adafruit website here and talk about design for manufacturer and those people that have no idea what that means. As always, thank you to all my Patreons. You really help out. I really appreciate it. Now, Adafruit felt the need back in 2009 to have to document how to build a cable. Now, <laughs> I, you know, I come from a time when things like this were not necessary. And I, I laugh, but I laugh at myself as I fell prey to this exact same thing. Now, last night, there was some time spent on the Discord trying to figure out why somebody's Z80 Retro didn't work. And it turned out they had a bad cable. Or they had a good cable. I don't know. Let's look at these two diagrams, this pin out, these pin numbers, and a manual for a motherboard that I have in the other room, and try and understand what were they thinking, all right? Starting with the Adafruit page here. It turns out they had some problems with people building cables that didn't work, or maybe they did it themselves. I didn't read the whole article. This is from you know, 15 years ago. But this picture here is what really caught my eye. This is beautiful, all right? On the Z80 Retro, if you build a ribbon cable by hand and you put an insulation displacement connector on the uh, on the other end that they don't show that plugs into this uh, header over here, and you wire it like this, it it will work fine. Okay, and this I would argue is the correct way to use a ribbon cable. Well, this is the right pin orientation. This is wrong. both of these are completely wrong, and we'll get to that in a minute. But the top one here labeled good uh is <laughs> so labeled because if you pull apart the wires in the ribbon cable as you see in this picture you can clearly see that you know the the the, the cable uh wire with the stripe on it is usually pin 1 over here <laughs> if it's not go find another manufacturer <laughs> okay <laughs> but the one that's so marked is pin 1 and if you count the wires in the ribbon, one, two, three, four, five, in this order, and someone tells you to connect the, the wires in a ribbon cable to a, a D sub connector over here, like a nine pin, you might be inclined to do it as drawn up here if you're going to do it by hand and waste tons of time pulling all the wires apart and soldering them on this way. And the reason you might do that is because on a D-sub connector, this up here is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in that order. For a male connector in this orientation, that's how they would be numbered, okay? Now look what happens with the other uh, four pins down here, the four wires, right? They go on the bottom row. These are numbered in like a, a round robin order on this connector, one, two, three, four, five across the top, and then six, seven, eight, nine on the bottom, going back up like this. All right, and whoever invented the connector can number the pins however they want. These rectangular connectors have a couple of different ways of numbering them. Sometimes they say one, two, three, four, five down this way. And some people call this one, you know, left and right, two left and right, or they might say one A, one B, or they might say one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. It could be anything, all right? Now, on the retro, I numbered the pins this way in uh, in KiCad, and I can talk about that in another video. Uh, the short of it is, if you number the pins this way, then you use the default footprints when you're designing the uh, copper traces on the on the on the circuit board, uh, it turns out that uh, the majority, at least by my experience, of all the copper footprints expect you to number the pins this way. If you don't number them this way, they don't match the copper, and then you have a whole nother problem. So you end up numbering the pins on a um, on a rectangular header uh, quite often. You'll see them numbered exactly like this. On the other hand. If they numbered them one, two, three, four, five down like this, and then put six, seven, eight, nine, ten up the other side, in what KeyCAD would refer to as, as uh, I guess this would be counterclockwise order, okay? And they have things like that when you go to pick the kind of component or how you want them numbered. 
if 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 they were cl- uh, counterclockwise, then it would match this this D connector, and everything would be fine. But if you never heard of the phrase "design for manufacturer," and then you were tasked with the job to assign which wire goes on which pin, you might decide, "Oh, let's do this in an orderly fashion," and you'd pick this top scenario. Because if you pick this bottom scenario, which is the one that I chose on the retro, what you're doing is you're connecting pin one from this rectangular header to pin one on the D sub connector. Then you're going to take the wire that goes to pin two on the rectangular connector here, which is the second wire in this ribbon, and you can see it pokes down here to pin nine on the D sub connector. Now, pin 2 on the D-sub, again, in the so-called bad or, uh, orientation, would then be connected to pin 3 on the rectangle. Pin 4 would then go to, what is that, pin 8 on the bottom row, and so on. All right, so why did I do this? Why did I do, Why was I so insane, right? Well, because this is not how you're supposed to use ribbon cables. Both of these diagrams are completely stupid, okay? Here's why. Ribbon cables were invented to be used with insulation displacement connectors. You see these jaws, these teeth on here? All right. This is a, unfortunately, uh, upside down and backwards view of the female connector of a, D, of a D9. All right. Technically, this is actually called DE9, but I often say DB. Everyone says DB. They're actually used di- different letters and stuff if you, if you actually look up the proper name. But DB9, DE9, that's not our problem today. What is our problem today is that if you use a ribbon cable and you don't use an insulation displacement connector on it, you're not using the ribbon cable in the way it was designed to be used, okay? And by that, I mean you take the flat ribbon and smash it on the back of this connector, (laughs) which if you do that, look what happens. In the the DE9, you got pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then you got 6, 7, 8, 9. All right? So this being the female uh, connector, that's how it it, it would so be numbered, right? But, but, But look what happens. If you if you decide to build a cable like this, right? That's not how these numbers are. That's not how the wires are interleaved between all those connectors. You end up with a cable that looks like this if you use an IDC style connector. By using this pinning orientation, it is not possible to use an insulation displacement connector in order to achieve that you know, a pin arrangement. Now, having said that, I have in the past taken my ribbon cable and pulled apart all the wires in a ribbon cable, sort of like this, and then carefully and meticulously laid them back down in a different order in order to achieve the, uh, let's use the word creative, choice of the ordering of the wires and then crimp that on. Yes, it will work. But that is how we, it's prone to error. It's a complete waste of time, utterly pointless. I call that stupid, okay? It is. It's completely missing the entire point of using a ribbon cable in the first place. It shows a complete lack of understanding of what design for manufacture means, okay? Design for manufacture means I'm not going to take this and turn it into a manual process that can never really be automated. I mean, I suppose you could build a machine to do this. I'm sure no one ever has. This is a complete waste of time. You have to hire people to pull this apart by hand, operate solder stations, inhale the fumes of the flux, emitting into the atmosphere, creating cancerous tumors in the workers. Everything about this is just utterly wasteful and stupid. But... And the reason Adafruit points this out and calls this one good is because motherboard manufacturers, whoever came up with this, <laughs> decided that it would be a standard to maximize the cost of manufacturing those cables as well as the pollution and <laughs> soldering fumes and everything else. Look how they number these things. Pin 1 is here. 
Data carrier detect. Pin two is receive data. Three is transmit. Four is DTR. Five is ground. This is the top row of the D9 connector. And look at these pins over here. These are on the bottom row of the DE9. Okay, and because there's a nine nine pins on the on the D connector and ten on the rectangle, they remove this one here. And some play sometimes they'll put a key in the uh, in the connector. They'll fill the hole in the connector that sits down on the header so that people can't flip it around and plug it in backwards. All right, and that is clever and creative and probably a good idea. What's not a good idea is to force everyone to ever make a cable that goes into an IBM PC motherboard to solder them in by hand in a bass backwards arrangement like this. If they were arranged like this, you can see up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. That's exactly the same as this. You can easily just grab a connector like this, press it on, crimp it. No soldering, no fumes. It could be done by a machine at a billion times faster rate than hiring a bunch of people at Foxconn to sit there and spend their lives inhaling flux fumes. So then, why did I choose to use this utterly insane pinning arrangement on my connectors, where I put the transmit and receive lines on pins three and five on this connector, rather than what the PC does, as you recall, they have what it was a DTR over here, now I can't recall. Uh, D uh, carrier detect, receive, transmit, and they're going back and forth like this. Well, I, I ignore, I ignore, and I put the transmit and receive on these two pins here, okay? So uh, I did this because when you press fit the displacement connector onto this header and you do the same thing on the other side, when you do the D9, they match, and they do the right thing so that you can take this and plug it into a regular 9-pin uh, what a PC uh, user might call a COM port, okay? Now, the problem with this, of course, is if you run off to buy a pre-made cable like this, and I fell prey to the same thing. Honestly, I had no idea how the PC motherboard pinouts worked. I saw this, and I assumed that this was some kind of a strain relief and that it, it, they did what every sane human engineer would do and use an insulation displacement connector on both ends, and that this would go, what I would argue is straight through, would pin one here, would be pin one there. In this zigzag up and down arrangement of the pins would match the zigzag up and down arrangement of the pins on, on the uh, D sub connector, because that's how all insulation displacement connectors work, as they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like that. That is the entire reason ribbon cable was designed. It was intended to be used this way. It was designed so that people do not have to solder all the wires on the connectors, inhale the fumes, and then die of cancer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right? So <laughs> this is just the worst choice. I mean, I suppose I suppose they could have chose worse. They could have put pin one here and then two on the bottom and three and then four. I mean, they could do a completely random order. That would be worse. I get it. But forcing the manufacturers to solder these things in in a weird order is the worst choice uh, when, when for free, they could have just pressed it on and clamped it shut and fully automated the process. Okay. Now, what does that mean to us? It means that if you want to try and use one of these with a Z80 Retro, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. Why? Because they decided that inside this housing, they're going to hire somebody to hand solder around all those pins. So uh, if you end up with one of these and you decide, oh, darn it, I wanted to use it with my Retro, what you're going to have to do is take that header uh, connector off and cut this thing off and resolder it to do this, which is what they should have done in the first place, or just cut the whole thing off and throw it away and go out and get one of these from anywhere. Here's a web page at Amazon 
this UXL, whatever the heck. I think these are like a buck a piece if you buy a bag of 10. Send them to your friends. Go Get on the Discord for the retro and give them away, whatever. Uh, and then you can just simply crimp this thing on to the cable that you and I accidentally bought, thinking that it would go in a sane and, uh, and humane way <laughs> and be designed for manufacturing, right? So, in conclusion, I simultaneously apologize for this choice in pinning of this connector and defend my choice of pinning for this connector. And the reason I did this is because a, I thought someone somewhere in the last 40 years had a clue and used this ribbon cable and displacement connectors in the way they were intended. And B, I wanted to be able to make my own cables without this and soldering. And it, it, those of you that may have tried it would notice that the rubber insulation on ribbon cables is not Teflon. This stuff melts so easily and runs all over. I mean, yeah, I've made cables like this before. No, you don't want to do this. This is probably some sort of PVC or vinyl, which is also toxic if you inhale the fumes as it melts. I mean, this is so bad, so wrong in every way. It just shows a complete lack of respect for humanity. And I'm not saying that... Adafruit did anything wrong. They're just showing you, oh, by the way, because of someone else that doesn't know what they're doing and wants to kill everyone, they decided that this was supposedly a good idea. And if you have to compensate and tolerate the presence of uh, humanity that's getting in the way and stifling the proper evolution of an intellectual society by imposing a standard that requires this kind of stuff to go on. I mean, just, ah, uh, okay. I'll, rant mode off, okay? So, if you're building a retro and your serial port doesn't work, throw this away or cut it off and replace the creatively wired end with one of these, okay? Now, as we move forward, I could see the possibility of a future version of the retro being designed such that pin 2 over here would also be routed to a different version of this header over here, such that we could arrange the header, the jumpers, right? Now, so what are we looking at here? Remember, this is the RS-232 level shifter, and the transmit and receive signals go into this connector. And they do it in a way so that if I take a jumper and I connect 5 and 4 together, and another connector, another shunt, and connect 2 and 3 together here, what I'm doing is I'm connecting this wire here, which is what transmit in that scenario, to go over to pin 3 on this header here. And this receive line would come up and go to this other one over here, pin five. All right. Now on a D on a D connector, what you've got this this wire that comes off this connector here goes to D sub pin one. This goes to D sub pin two and D sub pin three. All right. In spite of how they're numbered here, the physical ordering was obviously designed to match this kind of an arrangement here. Right as I've been ranting for 15 minutes. Okay, so uh, that works fine because th these two pins here are the send and receive or the receive and send, depending on how the rest of the cables are wired. And that's why the jumpers are there in the first place. It gives you the ability to swap around pins two and three, which is a super nuisance. You always got to buy like a null modem or you got to hack up your cable and then go back in there and rearrange the pins like this and flip around these. It's so incredibly annoying. No. So I put this header on there to allow you to do that by just moving these jumpers up and down and reorgan rearranging these two pins, right? Make our lives much easier. So in a future retro, if I took a, you know, a five pin header like this, 
and I put a second row on it, and I happened to look this morning, I think it might even fit on the retro. What we could do is set up a pinning arrangement on here to compensate for the ineptitude going on with the PC cables, thus making us ourselves standard with the uh, society-killing arrangement of hand-soldered ribbon cables so that we could, if we wanted to, connect pins uh, two on this header and pin three to various send and receive and flip them around in case they're backwards or three and five in this scenario to go to pins two and three on the DE9 and put jumpers in another orientation over here. All right. So I apologize for not thinking about that in the first place. In my defense, <laughs> it never dawned on me that anyone anywhere would ever arrange the pins <laughs> on a rectangular header whose like only real way to connect it to wiring by the way from a rectangular header like this is to use a rectangular you know IDC connector like one of these i mean <laughs> that is the only choice and it's why even when you do it wrong you still use <laughs> an IDC connector for the rectangular end over there. So what they've done wrong is they didn't allow themselves to use an IDC uh, connector for the 9-pin on this side. It, 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 wasting money, time, and creating uh, pollution, hardship, death, and destruction, famine. It's just terrible. Just terrible choice. All right? So, uh, like I said, I apologize for that, but hopefully this rant will help some people because... Like I said, I, the first thing I did with my with my retro is take a cable off a PC motherboard, plug it in, and go WTF. <laughs> and I'm not the only one. There's a le several other people have done the same thing. Like I said, just last night we spent some time in the Discord for <laughs> for, for this channel, the retro Z80 retro Discord, and. <laughs> And someone else had the same problem. Other people were chiming in. Oh, yes, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Unfortunately, when you're the only person in the room who's actually right, then it starts looking like you're the one who's wrong. So uh, whatever. <laughs> I, I'm sticking with this design because I know I'm right. But we can compensate for the ineptitude of everyone else on the planet that numbered it wrong in a future revision where I could put maybe a double row header. Like I said, I could come up with some. A uh, way to intertwine all the uh, signals so that we can rearrange the jumpers and accommodate the rather creative pinning that someone decided to be building into a standard. All right? Let me know what you think. Maybe there's a better way to do this. I, 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 I don't think so because it's just physically set up that, such that... <laughs> This is just bad. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.